Hello and welcome to this little introduction to spinning on a drop spindle. I'm Ruth and this video will just show you a little bit about um, how to make your own yarn using this really simple tool. Uh, first things first, um, you can make your own drop spindle using um, a bit of dowel and an old CD and a hook um, or a notch in the wood. Um, it's not a very complicated thing to make. It basically consists of a shaft and a weight or a wall. The wall can be at the top like this one which is a top wall spindle or it can be down here um, which is a bottom wall spindle. This one has a hook um, which makes it slightly easier for a beginner but you can have a notch as well um, or you can hitch the, the thread onto the top of the spindle if you've got neither of those. Mostly that's when it's a bottom wall spindle like this, so you could hitch your thread onto the top there. This spindle, um, the first thing you need to do is to set it up so you can spin. Um, I like to do this with a leader thread, uh, which is simply a bit of thread. Um, I use a bit of knitting wool, something that's got a little bit of grip that's not too shiny or silky. Um, because I'm going to attach some loose fibres to this. So I've tied mine in a loop but you can just tie it, tie it on. I like, I like a loop to start with, um, it makes it easier for me to attach fibre. So all I'm going to do is put one end of the thread through, well one end of the loop through the other so it's attached at the bottom there and then I'm just going to put it up and onto the hook. This allows you to spin and you'll see that by doing that I'm adding twist to the yarn above. And when you add twist you also add a bit of energy and you can see it curling on itself there. The great thing about a drop spindle, rather than spinning a little bit of wool, so you picked up a bit of wool from a hedgerow. Um, this is this has been washed, so this is this is washed Shetland fleece. If you maybe picked up a little bit of this from a hedgerow, you might try to spin it with your hands. Um, you might just twist it in your fingers, and it's quite slow. But you can keep pulling it apart and getting a longer, a longer thread. The good thing about drop spindles is it speeds up the amount of twist you put into the fibre and it also stores the yarn for you so you can make longer and longer threads. You might be able to see there, I've just added a little bit of twist with my fingers and it makes it a lot stronger. Before you could just pull it apart with no twist. And that's, that's why we spin yarns, to add the strength to the fibres. So we've got something that we can make our clothes out of that's a bit stronger than just the fleece on its own. Now we've set up the spindle and um, you've seen a little bit of how twist works with the um, Shetland fibre. This is what I'm going to use to spin from. It's a uh, Leicester, Border Leicester wool um, and this is being commercially processed um, into what's called a top. Um, and what it means by that is that the fleece has gone from something like this, where the fibres are going in lots of different directions. It's been washed and combed so that they all run in the same direction. Now this is quite a wide bit of top, so I'm going to split this down the middle. Just kind of very, holding it very, very gently. And I'll use part of this to spin from. So, the spindle adds a twist, but your hands are what makes the yarn. And here, um, this part of the process is called drafting. And um, so what you do, I'm, I'm holding this really lightly, just enough. If you hold it too tight, you can't pull it at all. So I, what I want to do is gently pull a little bit of fibre out. This is drafting, um, sometimes called drawing, drawing out, um, 
and this is where you get to choose how fine you want your yarn. So this is where it will attach to the spindle and the twist will come in here and you'll keep pulling out along here. But I don't like to do this before I start spinning because the aim of the game with drafting is that the you do not have ends next to ends. What you want is an overlap. Because if you have an overlap with the fibres, it's stronger. If you have the ends together, you create weak spots in the yarn. So, it's now time to join this on to your spindle. So what I'm going to do is hold it over my wrist in this hand. It doesn't matter which hand you use, whichever you feel comfortable with. One hand will you will twist the spindle and the other hand will hold the fibre. Um, this method that I'm going to show you is called park and draft. So I will twist the spindle, add a little bit of twist in, then I will park it between my knees and then I will draft out the fibre and allow a little bit of that twist to come up. I'll twist the spindle again and add more twist. And when, I'm, when I've got the twist that I want, when it looks about right, I will then wind that yarn around the base of the spindle. Those are the three steps really that are involved in spinning. You've got the drafting, you've got the spinning of the spindle, and then you've got the winding on. And that's it, it is that simple. Um, it does take your hands a little time to get used to, and that's why I'm showing you the park and draft method. Um, that way you can do this, the processes separately, and um, when you get used to that, the, the processes can be done simultaneously. Um, so that's, now it's time to join onto the spindle. So we have our leader thread. This bit of thread is a little bit long, um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of twist. The interesting thing uh, is it's good to practice when you have a bit of leader thread on. It's where you pinch your fingers, that that's where the twist will stop. So I've pinched there, I'm going to stop my spindle. I'm going to hold it between my knees. And this bit of yarn has a lot less twist and if I let go now, you'll see that the twist comes up into that part as well. So um, that's just a little bit of how the park and draft method works. I'm going to wind a little bit of this on because it's a little bit long. So I've just got a little section of yarn there. So I've added a little bit of twist. Now I'm going to open the loop at the top and I'm going to join a little bit of this fibre. I don't actually want to join a huge amount, I just want to catch it in the twist that I've created. Like so. So now the fibre is joined on. If I pulled it too hard it would come out so I'm just going to add a little bit more twist and then I can start drafting my fibre. The trick here is not to let the twist come into the fibre over here. If the twist does get into this fibre, um, it will then become really hard to draft, like you can see here. So I use my fingers to pinch in different places where I do and I don't want it, and then I'm just drafting out small sections and letting the twist come in. And I can do this for as long as my arms are, which is the limit to drop spindles. I'm then just winding it on the base of the spindle and then I'll hook at the top again. I'm twisting this clockwise. Um, this is the traditional way to make a knitting yarn. Um, you twist it clockwise and then when you have a thread or two threads you put the two together anti-clockwise creating a yarn that is, is like this when you twist it back on each other. So this is the basics of drafting out a yarn. And you continue like this 
until you've spun as much thread as you want. You can see I'm not holding this very tightly. Um, I have this over my wrist because I don't want this end getting tangled in with my thread. It's really easy to do. Sometimes I'll just hook it several times round. There are different ways of holding it. You could hold it underneath like this, or you could hold it on top. Um, it doesn't really matter whichever feels comfortable to you and isn't putting any strain on your hands. So I keep winding on. I realise I've wound it on. Generally you'd wind on in the same direction that you spin. I realise I'm just winding this on anti-clockwise by accident. So I'm adding a little bit of twist. It doesn't really matter as long as you keep the direction. Add a little bit of twist. Stop the spindle. And then draft. When I pinch at the top here to pull the fibre out, I'm making sure that I'm grabbing, each time I'm grabbing some of the ends of the fibres because I want as many, lots of different ends going in at the same time. Eventually you'll get to a point where your fibre has snapped or you've come to the end of your fibre and you want to join on another. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You could knot it, but if that's if it's snapped, you could knot it on, but then you come across a knot when you're trying to ply or when you um, are trying to knit with it, and that can be really annoying to deal with. So the trick here is not to join anything that is too big. So joining this very fine to this very thick, it's not gonna work very well. You'll end up with weak spots. So, you want to pull out, make sure this end is all fluffy as well. And then you want to lay your yarn over the top. I'll show you, if I put the twist in here, you can see it starts to grab the little fibres. You don't want to add too much, but then you want to draft out a bit, add more twist draft out a bit, add more twist and the, the trick is little bits and a little bit more twist and you just keep going. So that's how you join two threads and you can see you wouldn't know exactly where but I joined those two together. So now you can see how the two processes go together. With park and draft you stop the spindle but this is, um, this is drafting and spinning simultaneously. So I set the spindle spinning, and with these two hands, I draft out the fibre. And I keep going until either the spindle stops, you want to make sure you stop it before it starts going back the opposite way, or it hits the floor, or of course it drops out of my hands. And that's the basics of spinning a yarn on a drop spindle.